In this video, we are talking about the combined gas law. So here's the combined gas law. It's the one in green. P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. Memorize it. You'll need to use it. In this equation here, the subscripts 1 stand for before, or the initial values, and 2 stand for after, or the final values, or the new values. And what's different between from, um, from the ideal gas law with the combined gas law is that with the, com with the ideal gas law, you're given three of the four variables, P, V, N, and T, and you're solving for the fourth, whichever one you're not given. With the combined gas law, what's happening is you're given some of the variables, and then they change. Now, some of them usually don't change. Whatever doesn't change, all you do is you cross it off. Cross off everything that doesn't change. How do you know it doesn't change? Well, a lot of times in the problem you're told, oh, this doesn't change or that doesn't change. On the other hand, if nothing at all is said about one or more of the variables, like they don't mention n, a lot of times that happens. Nothing is said about n, the, the amount, uh, the number of moles. Um, then you cross it off because that means it's not changing. The, the symbols mean the same thing that they do in the ideal gas law. P is pressure, V is volume, N is number of moles, and T is temperature. Now, the, what, one of the different things about the combined gas law is that you don't have to convert the pressures to atmospheres or the volumes to liters. As long as you have the same units on both sides, they can be millimeters of mercury on both sides for the pressure and milliliters on both sides for the volume. That's fine. N's always going to be in moles, of course. But, and this is really important because it's one of the most common mistakes, the temperature always has to be in Kelvin. You will get the wrong answer if you do not convert the temperature to Kelvin before plugging it in. So the way you use this, once you recognize it's a combined gas law problem because something's changing, is you figure out what's not changing and cross it off on both sides. What you're left with once you cross off the variables that, that do not change are is going to be one of the, the small gas laws that you'll see in most chemistry textbooks. You know, they call them, there's named Charles Law, Boyle's Law, Avogadro's Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and, and some others. Um, I don't really care if you know the names because you can get all of those just by knowing the combined gas law. And in the problem, you'll be told what's not changing, or it's not mentioned, so it's not changing. Cross it off, and what you have is one of those laws. It's a, simple, it's a simpler form of the combined gas law. And all you're going to do is once you've crossed off and erased, basically, everything that does not change, then you're going to figure out which of the variables you're trying to find. Rearrange, do a little bit of algebra rearrange the equation, solve for the variable that you're trying to find, and then plug everything in and get your answer. Remember that you don't have to convert pressure to atmospheres or volume to liters as long as you have the same units on both sides, but T, temperature, has to be in Kelvin. So let's do an example with the combined gas law problem. So we're reading this problem. It says calculate the new pressure of a gas that is initially at a pressure of 723 millimeters of mercury. Right there, if you come upon this problem out of the blue on a test or some homework or something, Right there, you know that this is a combined gas law problem because something's changing. You have an initial pressure, 723 millimeters of mercury, and you're trying to find the new pressure. So the pressure's changing. And so it's initially at a pressure of 723 millimeters of mercury and a volume of 279 milliliters. That's, so both those numbers, the 723 and the 279, are the initial um, pressure and volume. So those are the ones, the P1 and the V1. Its volume is decreased, so its new volume, it's, it's after it changed, is 244 milliliters. We want to find the new pressure. So the first thing we do is figure out what's not changing. And I tell you in this case that N and T don't change. So we cross them off. When we cross them off, what we have left is a simpler um, gas law. This ends up being um, Boyle's law, where N and T are constant. But it doesn't matter. It's one of the gas laws. Now that we know we have a simplified form of our combined gas law, then we figure out what we're trying to solve for. Well, we want to calculate the new pressure. The new means the twos, so we want P2. So now we're going to do just a little bit of algebra, multiply through by 1 over V2, or, or however you do that. And when we do that, the V2s cancel on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and V2 goes in the bottom, the denominator on the left, so we get this form, P1 V1 over V2 equals P2. And now all we do is plug in. So uh, P1 was 723 millimeters of mercury, and I just kept it in millimeters of mercury. That's what my answer is going to be in. The new pressure will be in millimeters of mercury. 
Um, V1 was 279 milliliters. V2 is 244 milliliters. The units of milliliters cancel. Right? And we're left with millimeters of mercury. And three sig figs, everything was three sig figs. So we end up with 827 millimeters of mercury. Now, if you're asked for a different unit of pressure, then you know how to convert to whatever that is. But you can do the problem just like this. So remember, you know it's a combined gas law problem because something is changing. Figure out what's not changing, cross it off, get the simpler equation, rearrange, solve for the variable you're trying to find, plug in, you got your answer.